Hi, my name is Syed Ali, and I am a student here at the University of St. Joseph. And today, we will be running a protocol for cDNA as well as PCR for microRNAs of interest. So today, we're going to be going over a cDNA protocol. Um, and that pretty much encompasses us making cDNA after isolating RNA. And so this cDNA is going to be specific to our microRNAs that we have um, isolated and microRNAs of interest. And the initial step is pretty much adding our primers and annealing them. And with that, uh, we have our four RNA samples, and you will be utilizing them in a concentration-dependent manner and adding it to your reaction. So we will go ahead and pipette them first. And for this protocol, um, you would want to use PCR tubes um, and so that you're able to add the appropriate volumes and run the samples through the thermocycler. So we'll start with our first sample. And then our next. Our third sample. And our fourth. And so now that you've ad added your RNA sample, um, you're going to want to go ahead and add your primers. And so over here, we will be using a stem loop primer. And that will allow for us to single out on our microRNAs. And so with that, you'll add them at the appropriate volumes as well to each sample. And so for this protocol, the end goal of it is to amplify a microRNA of interest. And so in carrying out this step for cDNA, we are looking to make a form of the microRNA of interest that we can measure. And so we are adding our primers. And upon adding them, we will also be adding water uh, an appropriate volume as needed depending on your RNA concentration. So we have our water. And so now that you've added your waters to your samples, you can go ahead and spin down your samples in a vortexer and incubate it at 65 degrees. Now that you have your samples that have been incubated at the appropriate temperature, we will now be making our master mix um, that includes our enzyme, um, that includes the enzyme superscript 4, which is a reverse transcriptase, and that will actually create the cDNA that we are hoping to amplify. And so we, we will start by adding our necessary buffers to this mix. So we have our first strand buffer. We have our DTT buffer. And 
and we have our DNTPs. And including into this buffer, we will be adding our RNase out in order to prevent any RNases from degrading our sample. And then we will finally add our superscript 4, which is our reverse transcriptase. and that will allow for us to create cDNA. Alrighty. And you just want to make sure you give this sample a good spin in the vortexer before you add it to your RNA samples. And so you can go ahead and add it now. And now that all your samples have the master mix added, you can go ahead and run your samples through the thermocycler and run it at a PCR program that is specific to your microRNA of interest. Uh, now that we have our cDNA sample with our reverse transcriptase, um, we can now go ahead and put it into the thermocycler and run it for a cycle that allows for reverse transcriptase to actually work. And so we have a protocol here on our thermocycler. We input our samples and we run the program with the appropriate volume. Now that we have our PCR product, um, we can go ahead and run our product through a process known as gel electrophoresis. Um, and so what we will be looking for here on a gel is bands indicating the size of your product of interest. And because we are looking at microRNAs, our products are very small, so we will be using a low weight molecular marker. But before we go ahead and run our gel, um, we will just make, be making our buffer into which we'll dispose into the apparatus. Um, our buffers are TBE based and we run our gels at a 0.5 X concentration. So just adding our TBE to our water. Um, this is the buffer we'll be utilizing and you will simply pour it into the gel dam apparatus and let everything else overflow. Making sure the bottom of your gel is submerged into the buffer. Now that we have that set, we are actually ready to load our samples. And so we have our gel loading tips as well as our ladder and our PCR product. Um, so the way you load a gel is entirely up to you. Um, for preference, I load my gel from left to right. So we will be adding our DNA ladder. Um, now that your gel apparatus is all set, um, we are going to start by loading our ladder. And once that is set, you can go ahead and load your samples. So we've loaded our first sample. to our second.
in our third sample. fourth. And now that you have loaded your gel, you are now ready to start running it. So we'll make sure our electrodes are facing the correct way. And so you'll want to plug in your gel box into your power source. Um, set it at the appropriate voltage, depending on how fast you want to run it. And you can go ahead and run and make sure you see your bubbles coming up from the bottom. Alrighty, and once your gel has finally run, um, you can go ahead and take it out. So we will pour off our excess buffer that's in here. And so our next step includes staining the gel prior to imaging. So we'll take out our gasket and our gel plates. And so you're going to carefully lift up on the short plate. you have that off, you can go ahead and cut off your wells, and you can go ahead and lift up your gel. And using your specified staining, um, pour the stain over the gel directly and place this gel onto a shaker for five to 10 minutes prior to imaging. Um, and so after running your gel and having it stained, when looking at it under the imaging system, you can see that there are bands present, which means we have successfully isolated our microRNAs of interest, and you can further analyze your results from this image.